In this lesson, we're going to be painting a creek scene with snow, and we're going to talk about patterns, in particular the pattern of the snow and the rocks, the rocks and the water, looking for patterns in the background, trying to separate background, middle ground, foreground, maybe a few more uh, uh, areas of depth in there, but painting what we know instead of what we see so we can create a painting that works. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at a creek scene with snow, and we want to think in terms of a pattern here. Starting in the background, like we've done several times in the last few weeks, looking for those layers of trees that give you background, middle ground, foreground. Too often, we look at a group of trees like this, and it all becomes a flat view. In other words, it's just a jumbled mess. And you really don't see any distance there. The camera doesn't pick up the distant trees lighter and bluer or the foreground trees darker and warmer. Everything's kind of jumbled and you can't paint it that way. You have to force things into a certain uh, certain pattern. Same thing with the snow. You got a pattern of dark and light that the snow creates. Darker rocks, lighter snow. And in the water, you have lighter rocks, darker water, and you're always looking for those patterns um, to make the composition work better and to make the painting read better. So when I look at the background, I want to be able to see some suggestion of separation layers. And I can, there's a definite tree or group of trees here. And I don't have to be exact like this, but I do see trees here tree here. I can pick out layers, uh, this being background, these being kind of middle ground, uh, closer middle ground, and then the foreground are the trees in here. So I want to see those in terms of those layers, and I have to separate them more. So that looks like this. If I, I want to force a, and I'm not painting what I see. This is when you paint what you know, but I see the distant bluer trees or mountains, whatever's back in there. I'm just forcing that in there and it gives a bit of distance. I can even get a little more of that. I can force a little more of that around. And I don't want to overdo it, but I can get a few more shapes of looking through the trees and you get some sense of space and depth in there. But then these trees here, they're all kind of the same value. They're next. Then these trees in here are the next. And the darks are going to get darker as they come forward. I should have the darkest dark um, up here in front. Maybe not the whole mass of leaves, but at least some of it so they come forward instead of be in this value. Now, these are dark back in here, but not as dark as that. And that creates that distance. So separating trees to create layers of depth there. And then the pattern of the snow, I think, pops out pretty well. But I want to organize that. I might pull some of this together so it's not so broken up. But there's definite shapes I like in here on the foreground boulders. And we got some reflected light in the boulders. So looking at a couple of other paintings, I've got all John Carlson here. You can see the layers here, the background trees of the darker blue, and then the more faded, warmer, slightly warmer violet, and then these trees in here, and then the foreground trees. So you have at least three layers of trees. And he has simplified it and separated it more than what he saw. You have to paint what you know as well as what you see. And you have to practice that. And you mess up on the first 20, 25, 30 of them. Uh, then it starts to make more sense. But it's that repetition of practicing it over and over again that really helps. This is another John Carlson. And again, you can see the pattern of the dark and the light with the rocks and the snow, trees and the snow. Real strong contrast, but a real definite design with this snow. It's not haphazard or just painting what he sees. He's designing it to create better shapes in here. And a pattern. The, the snow breaks up the trees. You see a pattern of snow behind the trees. 
in the water and a pattern of dark in here behind the snow then on top of the snow and on top of the snow here with the trees so very nice abstract shapes patterns of snow and the last one here again the pattern of the lighter snow against the darker ground but you can also see the layers definite layers of background background trees that are a little closer then another layer of trees in here and then the foreground trunks as they come forward so it's got three or four layers there too that he forces a separation in there using as we can see using um, a value change the darks back in here are a lot lighter they're dark but not as dark as these darks and they're a lot lighter uh, a little bluer and then as you come forward the darks even though there's not much dark in these yellow trees there's a dark accent there that's darker than back there and then these darks are darker yet so you get that progression of value and temperature cooler as you go back warmer as you come forward but a very nice design shape in these trees, not detail. There's broken color, a lot of color in these background trees, but there's not a lot of detail. The simpler you can keep them, the better. So we want to look at this in terms of going from more complicated to trying to simplify with the knowledge of what we know about creating depth and distance uh, and values in our painting.